Hello everybody. So today we are going to talk about the chapter connecting the dots. So what do you mean by connecting the dots? I am going to come to that part later. First and foremost, I am going to talk about have you heard of the very influential men that are there in India like the Tatas, the Birlas, the Ambanis, this Azim Premji. So you must have heard of all of them, especially of the Tatas, Birlas and the Ambanis. So when I talk of these influential men, what firstly what do you understand by influential men? Influential men basically mean that they are influencing you or the general public in some way or the other. They have certain qualities which make them distinguish from the rest of the public. So, when I say they have certain qualities, so what are these certain qualities? What makes them who they are? What makes them at the top of the position, at the top of their league? If I say Ambani's, Ambani's are really, really doing very great when it comes to their geo network. They are at the top of the position. So, why is that? What is so different about them that makes them so distinguished from the rest of the others? So, it firstly, it must be something that they do, which is something that the general public would not be doing or something that they do in a very different manner. So, basically, the whole point of telling you all of this is because today's chapter, Connecting the Dots, is about Steve Jobs. Now, I don't know if you all have heard of Steve Jobs or not, but if you all use Apple products or even if you all don't use Apple products, I'm sure everybody wants an iPhone because iPhone, we all want that luxury. We all want, we all see our friends using iPhones and then we go like, oh wow, that person has it. One day I want an iPhone. But, what makes iPhone or the Apple products so distinguished in the market with regards to the rest of the products? Agar, if I say that I want an Apple phone in, uh, I want an Apple phone much more than the other phone, then what's the reason for that? It's because I'm attracted to that product a lot. And who is the founder of Apple? Steve Jobs. So, here is Steve Jobs and here are the products that Apple makes. That is Apple iPhone, iPad, laptop, watches. There are a lot of varied products that Apple is into. Now Steve Jobs unfortunately is no more. But Steve Jobs made great accomplishments with regards to technology, with regards to phones, with regards to laptops and when it comes to sharing his experience, this chapter is about connecting the dots. So, this chapter is written by Steve Jobs himself and it's not basically written by him. The speech that's given in this chapter was given by him at the Stanford University 114th year of graduation. So during the graduation speech, he gave this speech during the graduation of the Stanford University. Now, when I say connecting the dots, do dots ko jodna, that's what it basically means. So when I say connecting the dots, uh, in layman terms, you connect the backward dot with the forward dot. That's right. So if you're drawing two dots, you're basically connecting the backward dot with the forward dot. So firstly, I'll write the chapter's name. Connecting the dots by Steve Jobs. So like I said earlier, Steve Jobs was the chairman, was the CEO, the chief executive officer, the founder of Apple. And then this chapter is about connecting the dots. Now, when I say connecting the dots, so basically this chapter starts with three 
short stories which Steve Jobs says with regards to his life experiences. The first one being connecting the dots as the chapter is named. The second one is about love and loss. The third one is about almost a near to death experience. So when I say Steve Jobs, if you, if you read the very first paragraph, you will see that it's given that he's an entrepreneur. Now, when I say entrepreneur, what does it mean? So, entrepreneur is anybody who starts his own business. So, that's what entrepreneur means. So, if you see anybody in your area in your locality or anywhere around in the world opening up a shop of his own opening up a business of his own that person is called as entrepreneur then you will see the next word that comes is magnet magnet now here it's given he's a business magnet now, what's a business magnet? Business magnet is basically a wealthy and an influential person. So, if I give you examples, it can be Steve Jobs, it can be the Tatas, the Ambanis, the Birlas. All of these are business magnets. They are firstly wealthy people and secondly, they are highly influential people. Then the third one, he's an industrial designer. So, many of the Apple products were the genius of Steve Jobs. So, when I say he's an industrial designer, it means that many of the Apple products were brought into being by none other than, by none other than Steve Jobs. Continuing, the fourth one. He is an inventor. When I say he is an inventor, what does it basically mean? It means that he invented something. He brought something new for the very first time into the industry of science and revolution. So basically inventor means someone who brings out something for the very first time, who invents something for the very first time which was not into existence earlier. So coming down, I'll I'll go through these points again. Firstly, what was Steve Jobs? He was an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur basically means he was a businessman. Second, he was a business magnate. Business magnate being he was a wealthy and an influential person. Many people looked up to him. There were certain qualities that he had that no other person possessed and because of which he was able to establish a big company like Apple. Thirdly, he was an industrial designer. So industrial designer basically means he designed various products of Apple. He was able to bring various designing techniques into designing of Apple. And that is why he was known as the industrial designer. Fourth one, he was an inventor. Basically, Apple was not into being the kind of products that Apple made were not into being earlier and they came very came into being for the very first time because of Steve Jobs. Then you see that it's written that he brought microprocessor, microcomputer actually, revolution. from 1970s to 1980s. Now, what is a microcomputer? A microcomputer is basically that has microprocessor as, as, its, main, uh, as its main functioning unit in the CPU. So, its main core thing is the microprocessor. It has microprocessor for its functioning and that is a microcomputer revolution. 
so steve jobs was considered as a pioneer pioneer means he was considered as a big big person when it comes to the microcomputer revolution from the 1970s to the 1980s now here he says during the graduation speech that he is going to talk about three short stories and the chapter starts with he's the first story being connecting the dots so here what he says is that he was studying in reeds college so i'll give you one general knowledge is that steve jobs never really graduated from college yes i know right surprising but still you see the amount of knowledge the amount of uh, intellectual that he had he had was like no other so that means in the end what you need is passion the drive and the courage to follow your passion so this is what basically the chapter is all about so continuing in the first paragraph he says that he drops out of reeds college he wasn't he was he was actually into reeds college and he dropped out dropped out is the word that's used dropped out basically means that he did not continue he discontinued with reeds college during the very first 6 months but then he uh started with reeds college and continued on and off on and off basically means that so the word used there is dropped in dropped in means to join so these are basically two opposite words used here dropped out and dropped in dropped out basically means to go out or not to continue anymore and dropped in means to join or to continue so he joined reeds college for the first six for the he he stayed with reeds college for the first six months and then he dropped out but for the next 18 months he dropped in and then what was the one clever thing that he did was he started attending lectures that he liked so here what he says is that he did not attend all the lectures that were part of his course so what was he doing is he went to different classes saw what kind of lectures are going on and what he did in the end was that he started sitting in the classes like for the ones that he liked so i'm going to give you a very good example with regards to this is if you all have seen the movie three idiots there you see amir khan or rancho as he was called there he used to sit in the various classes which interest him a lot so that is exactly what steve jobs did here was he had started attending classes for which he really had a big interest in so and then in the last two lines he says that doing this was one of the best decisions of his life so what does he mean by that was that attending courses that were actually of use to him or which actually interest him was actually the best decision that ever came to his life so not attending the compulsory courses and dropping into classes which actually interest him actually benefited him and you will come to see how did they benefit him into the next paragraphs continuing in the second one you come to know that steve jobs never really had a dorm room so what is the word used here is dorm room so dorm room is basically a living space a residential kind of space that is usually there in colleges universities in hostels so it it basically is like a residential place that you have for a university or a, or in a campus so that is what basically means a dorm so usually all the students who are part of a university stay in a dorm area even in india you see that there are big universities and this big university have campus and in that campus they usually have hostels so you can see the other word for dorm is hostel but with regards to steve jobs was that he never really had a dorm room so what does that mean he never really had a place to stay and then it's written that 
with regards to sleeping he slept on the floor of a friend's dorm room so here you can see that he was basically struggling with life he did not have his own dorm room he had dropped he was dropping in and dropping out of college and from this you can conclude that he wasn't at his best of days with regards to college and with regards to having a graduation degree so then it's written that uh, for for the 5 cents that he got for the deposits of bottles so usually you see that empty coke bottles are usually returned back any aerated drinks bottles the glass bottles that you get they are usually returned back to the seller so yo what was he doing was he was collecting those glass bottles and then he was getting 5 cents for each of those bottles and for each of those bottles that he was collecting 5 cents were, what was he doing he was going for a very good very healthy very stomach filling meal at the hari rama hari krishna temple that was there so what the, what do you conclude from this yes i know you're surprised you're thinking hari rama hari krishna temple all the way in america yes there are many such temples over there that provide food to the needy to the people who want to come and go there and have a nice meal but for that what was the another struggle that he was facing he had to walk 7 miles a day so to visit that temple he had to go for a really long walk and after that long walk he had the best meal of his week that's what's written there that after such a long walk he was having a great great meal of his day so you understand here the kind of struggles that steve jobs was going through he did not have his dorm room he was dropping in and out of his college to have one good meal for the entire week he used to travel 7 miles and then he was happy for that just one meal and your now you must be thinking like you are really grateful for the three times a meal that fantastic meal that either you or your relatives or your mom or anyone cooks for you and you are grateful for those meals aren't you so you imagine if you get just one meal one good meal really good meal just once a week how much will you value it you'll value it a lot right and that's the reason steve jobs valued that meal a lot then it says that steve jobs followed his curiosity and intuition so these are the two words that are used here curiosity and intuition curiosity matlab if i have to translate it into hindi it means that utsukta so here you mean that curiosity means inquisitive so for your during reed's college he thanks his curiosity and intuition intuition what does intuition mean intuition means instinct instinctiveness in so intuition basically means your gut if i translate it in hindi it means ki mera dil kya kehta hai so it basically means that so when while follow while going into read while giving this speech he basically thanks his curiosity and his intuition for himself for choosing calligraphy classes so he says that reeds college offered one of the best calligraphy courses you all know what calligraphy is right your calligraphy is in much demand so basically calligraphy is a very different form of writing it's not the usual cursive writing that you see here or the space writing that you see here it has a different kind of font to it font means the way you write a particular letter or a particular sentence it has a specific style to it so that's calligraphy so here he says that in reeds college 
Reed's College offered one of the best calligraphy courses and thanks to his curiosity and intuition, basically he wanted to try out something new. So he was curious, okay, what is calligraphy like? What would it be if I learn calligraphy? What is this calligraphy course all about? What, what does it mean when I have to write a different letter, a letter into a different way? So here he says that he was curious. He was, uh, uh, he was intuitive as to, okay, I must follow this course. So which is why he took up calligraphy classes and here he learned the two main fonts. That is the serif and the sans serif. So these are the two main fonts. Now, uh, I don't know if you all have gone through the Word document. You all know, right? Every computer has a Word document. You know, PowerPoint, Word, all of that. Now, if there's a Word document and while typing something, if you want to choose the way the letter or the sentence is written, the style in which is written, you remember you go to the Times New Roman, you select the font. Yeah, I'm sure you're recollecting it. So Times New Roman from I'm sure you recollected it from the Times New Roman. So Times New Roman is a kind of font. So font basically means the way you want your lettering to be looked like. So, serif and sans serif are also types of fonts that uh, Steve Jobs learned during his calligraphy classes. Now, you must be wondering what is serif and what is sans serif. Now, I'll show you through an example. I'll take an example of, I'll say F, okay. This is F. This is F here. Now, what is serif and what is sans serif? Now, here you see F looks like this. I'll broaden it out so that you can see it better. So, here you see F the way it is written. You, you understand how is it written? It's written in a different manner this is the normal f that we write and this is some with some extra lining you see like you see the lining that you see here so these are the extra lines so this is serif and this is sans serif sans is basically means without uh in french if i'm not wrong it means without so serif means with some extra lining with some extra beauty added to the letter but when i say sans serif it means it's a simple way of writing so your serif and sans serif is where uh, steve jobs learned his way of calligraphy so these two are one of the if you go through uh, microsoft word you will see that it has serif and sans serif so your serif like i said it has extra lining here, no extra lining. And if I want to give you an, another example, I'll take example of letter A. Okay, we'll go with A. A. Okay, now your A will be with extra lines. So I'll mark this down with another color. So you see the extra lines here. So that is serif. Here it's absent. So that is serif and sans serif. Now, with regards to that, with regards to that, you will see that this was incorporated in the Macintosh computer. Now I say Macintosh. Now, at that point of time, Steve Jobs must have thought, okay, I've learned calligraphy. I don't know where it will be useful to me. But, okay, it's something new that I've learned. But when did he really use these two fonts or typefaces are, was when 
10 years down the line, 10 years later after Reed's college, he was making the Macintosh computer. And while making Macintosh computer, he incorporated these two fonts plus what is called as equally proportioned fonts or you can say letters. So what through calligraphy, the two main things he learned was this font and equally proportioned fonts or letters. So what does that mean? Through calligraphy, he understood the spacing between letters and words. So in calligraphy, spacing is very, very important. And that is why while making the Macintosh computer, he incorporated the same while making that. And that is why he says that thank you, thank he thanks himself for following his curiosity and intuition because of which 10 years down the line, his calligraphy classes were of so much use where he could put in the art, the various fonts that he learned into the computer.